Hello, everybody. It is Renee. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Mother's Day brunch. And so um, last week we were talking about the uh, poll and it was a landslide victory. I think it was like 81% of you love, love, love brunch. And so um, we are going to be talking about Dee's brunch recipes today. So while we're waiting for Dee to hop on to this broadcast, um, oh, apparently she's waiting for me. So um, in the meantime, here's what I want you guys to do. Um, if you would like today's recipes, I want you to give me a some kind of fun emoji. Um, what's what's a good mom's day uh, emoji? How about a rose? Um, so if you would like today's recipes early, earlier than the Monday newsletter, because that's going to be after um, Mother's Day, um, what, all you have to do is give me a rose emoji and type the word recipe. So rose emoji and the type word recipe. And uh, then we are going to uh, send those to you early. So um, I'm making a I'm making a commitment over here, D, um, <laughs> to uh, you know send send things out early. So D's having a, a couple of difficulties. So hey, Sandy, I love the rose. And okay, you guys. So if you want the recipes early, so earlier than next Monday, um, go ahead and give me a rose and then type the word recipe. And we'll make sure that you get a link to a ebook uh, for Mother's Day, a Mother's Day ebook. So, um, okay. Um, well, my dear D, where are you? Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. Uh, let me just respond to her by text. Um, okay. So, um, for some reason, uh, we, we just don't have her up here. So, okay. So, um, hi ladies. Um, I've got Karen, um, here and how are you, Karen? Um, uh, she's been talking about doing the, uh, fennel and, or no, the jicama, uh, salad from, from last time. Has anybody done that. Uh, another really cool thing um, that's really exciting is um, we just heard from uh, Ideal Corporate that we are going to be featured on the Ideal Corporate uh, website. So that's super exciting stuff. Um, Dee, you made it. Yay. Let's give everybody, okay, everybody, you got to press the heart button and let's give Dee a heart shower. <laughs> A waterfall shower. All right. So, D, um, I'm coming here from sunny California. It's kind of weird weather here. It's warm in the day and uh, not so not so good uh, in the morning and the evening. But that's okay. I'll take it. We got some sun. How are you doing? It's sunny. It's it's trying to be sunny here today. Yeah. My my lawn is a beautiful shade of green that my son is currently cutting and. It's kind of bothering me through that. <laughs> I'm it. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. all good. <laughs> um, all right. So I was just telling everybody that um, we are going to be featured um, on the, uh, you know, if you go, if you're a coach and uh, you're looking for a place to send all of your clients, uh, the low carb, uh, low fat uh, websites no longer running and so um we're being featured along with sarah mulera which is exciting stuff all right um so d um tell us so we got some great brunch stuff going on and and so by the way i i made some promises while you weren't around um <laughs> that uh, if people give us a, a rose emoji and type in the word recipe, they'll get the recipes early. So um, that's now it's all on you. <laughs> Sounds great. 
<laughs> I'll make that happen. Okay. I love that. I love a girl who can make it happen. <laughs> All righty. So D, tell us. Uh, so I, uh, D asked me early in the week, she said, um, please tell me what kind of menu for brunch and what do you think? And so um, she took some of my suggestions, added some of her suggestions. We were going to pop up a cocktail, but um, neither of us got that done today. It was a little crazy day for me. Um, and so um, maybe Dee can post the peach Bellini sometime before <laughs> Saturday. What do you think? Sure, I I can do that. Yeah. Don't don't we want her to do a live of the peach bellini, you guys? <laughs> hit, hit the heart yeah. button again. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm putting might the pressure be. on. I'm putting the pressure on today. All right, no, so okay. uh, let's talk about this gorgeous frittata. Mm -hmm. That gorgeous frittata is born out of your suggestion for a um, smoked salmon frittata, and I smoked that salmon myself. Um, so I've often seen comments that you can't have smoked salmon, and um, that would be a correct comment if it was sugar-laden um, in the grocery store um, with glaze, um, but you can totally smoke your own salmon. And actually, I only smoked it just enough to um, get the flavor in there and then finished it off in the oven. Um, so really, really simple. And you can do um, a large quantity at one time and then and then have it for later. And so salmon is such a versatile um, fish. It adds it's, it's very sturdy, very user friendly. Um, and one of those fishes that if you actually overcook a salmon, some prefer it that way because the crispiness of the of the salmon still has great flavor, almost like you want to say candied flavor, candied salmon. Um, but an excellent choice in a frittata because it holds up very well in the mixing process and then again in the baking process. Um, and so pictured here is a dill and salmon frittata with some arugula. Um, it is really a quite simple one. I did use green onion um, instead of regular onion. Phase four, you could use regular onion. Um, traditional frittatas also have, um, you know, butter, cream, um, those cheese. <laughs> and so this is a phase one version. And if you were in maintenance and you were looking to add a serving or two of healthy fats um, to meet your macros, then you could very simply adjust that to work but it is very flavorful without um, so i would encourage even maintenance clients to try things um you know without um sometimes um less is more because the flavor is loaded in this um frittata um, you also don't need any type of um, dairy product to make your eggs fluffy um, for a frittata. You just need some good old fashioned muscle power. So whip some air into those eggs and get them really nice and fluffy before you add the rest of your ingredients. And that's what makes your eggs really nice. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, how, how do we smoke salmon? Well, I, I have a Traeger smoker, <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I know a lot of, um, there's a lot of um, different methods, you know, some people have great big um, industrial smokers, some have, my, myself have Green Mountains or Traegers, some have the little eggs um, that are our smokers um and in my in in my house i know i know you guys are all sick to death of hearing it but i'm i'm in four days my 20 year old son's going to be home from university we also have an 18 year old son they go through loads of protein and so you know and now our weather has turned nice and so my barbecue and my smoker are actually outside opposite to each other and they're they're known to be going at the same time for long periods of time so <laughs> ah, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. Wow. I I've never smoked anything, so not surprising, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you know, to tell you the truth, um, 
It was a great way to get my husband a little bit interested in cooking. <laughs> Cause, oh, <okay>. Yeah. Because, <laughs> excuse me, he, um, he, he loves to do that type of cooking. Um, so I, I greatly appreciate that when he's uh, raring to go there. So, yeah. All right. So um, let's take a look at, and, and I know that you make crepes on a pretty regular basis and yeah. fill them with different things. So yeah. um, let's talk about getting that crepe consistency because honestly, I've never been able to do it. <laughs> ah. Well, crepe, so traditional cake, uh, crepe batter, um, sometimes um, I think there's a lot of, a lot of recipes that overthink crepe batter. Um, it's just really simple. It is really, um, a traditional one does have milk. Um, water works just fine. These ones picture do, do have just a, a little bit of milk in them. Um, water your flour. Um, the great thing about using ideal protein packets is their sweetener already in them. So you're not worried about adding a little bit of sugar because you're actually base um, shouldn't be too sweet. They should just be really light and delicate. And a big part about crepes is your batter has to be really thin, really, really quite thin. And the trick is, is the heat in your pan. So there's no oil in this batter as well. You can brush your non-stick uh, skillet um, if you wish with a little bit um, of your oil. But the trick is, is that you're going to swirl your batter in the pan really quick to get that nice thin, thin round. That's what you're looking for. So the thinner, the better. Um, and I did a double batch last night. So I used two ideal protein packs and that made um, 12 six inch crepes. So six, six, six inch crepes um, was a serving. Um, so really generous. And what I love about crepes <laughs> is, is that you can create a meal out of them or you can create dessert out of them. Um, they are that um, versatile. So when you, the, the crepe pictured actually just has pasteurized egg white and uh, Walden Farm syrup as a sweetener whipped into it to make a glossy, foamy, um, shiny filling, really super light. Um, and I, I, I used a syrup and we're, I know we talk about this all the time because I know there's so many out there that just despise um, using them and, and that's okay because I'm going to give you some different options. Um, but a quarter cup or two tablespoons in one egg white um, does the trick. Um, if you're doing something simple and you're not looking to add a lot to it. Um, rhubarb compote, chayote compote are amazing wrapped in the crepes or even just drizzled over top of your crepes. You don't have to fill crepes. You can just roll them and drizzle over top. You can also do egg white and veggie scrambler, scramblers um, in any phase. So I mean, your, if you're using egg whites, whole eggs, um, any choice of protein, all your veggies, a um, little bit of hot sauce or salsa, wrap them up in those bad boys and you've got some delicious um, snacking on hand. And so you can keep it really light and simple or you can really bulk it up. I also make a cream out of um, IP packets as well for a thicker um, cream if you want more of a decadent dessert. Um, and then you simply just split your recipe in half. Um, again, because you're using a pack for your cream and then a pack um, to make your crepes. So you can make them as simple or as fancy as you like. So they for, for me, for a brunch, um, they are a multi-purpose, they're a multi-purpose food product. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they, sound, they sound delicious. Um, are you going to be doing brunch or dinner? Me? Yeah. Me, myself? I, <laughs> I'm probably neither. <laughs> what? I'll tell, I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you more to it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> there's always tons of feedback about um, our IP pasta. So I want to address this to all of you. In this pasta is the rotini. Um, and we get a lot of feedback all the time about how disgusting it is and it's so tricky to cook and um, you know it gets big thumbs down. 
I, however, really, really like this option um, just for reasons as you see pictured. Um, I never cook ideal protein macaronis or rotinis. I simply soak them at room temperature with room temperature water. Um, an hour and a half for me is about perfect, but you can let it sit longer. Um, that way you can get a nice al dente um, noodle and it you don't, it's not mushy, they don't fall apart. I find the texture better, like more traditional pasta. And then it also holds um, your sauce or your veggie or your dressing or whatever you put on them. So it makes a great simple pasta salad. It also makes an excellent noodle um, for just good old plain beef um, broth or chicken broth. So your um, bone broths, um, the noodles are excellent in there too. And so on another note, so you know when at some point most clients, when they're doing phase one, they get that proverbial flu or that cold and it's really tough for them to feel like eating or getting the nutrition in. Um, but something like that, you can get your protein in in some good old chicken bone broth, um, really simple like that. And you don't have to cook, like you can literally, you just soak those on until they're al dente and then they're ready to go. So they're, they're actually a, a really great product. Mm -hmm. I love it, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I was really interested when you told me the first time that you didn't actually cook the pasta because the pasta takes forever to cook. Mm -hmm. um, so you just you're just sitting it on the counter. It takes what ten minutes or so. Oh no, it'll it'll take it about an hour and a half. What an hour yeah, and a yeah. half? You just, well, so I don't use hot water because I just use regular temp water and let them do their own thing. Um, I like my noodles to be a tad bit firm. I don't like mushy noodles. And so heat really changes the texture of these noodles. And so, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't think, I don't know about all of you, but I doubt that I would ever be that far planned out ahead. So I love these <laughs> things. I'm, okay, I'm going to give you another tip. I'm going to give you another tip on that. Then you can drain them. And then put them in the fridge, and then they're just ready to go. <laughs> so you can okay. do it in the evening when, yeah, okay, when you're well, home. I know, I know. Yeah, that's a pre-planning thing for sure. Um, <laughs> and uh, Sandy says she loves a cold rotini salad, and mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer says she loves the crepes. So um, good to see you on, Jen. I haven't seen you in a while. Come see me. Um, awesome. <laughs> So, um, all right. So if you guys would like these recipes early, earlier than our regular Monday newsletter, we're going to send them out to you special in a little ebook, but we, you have to do a little project here. You have to send us a rose emoji and type the word recipe and, uh, we will send them out to you by Friday. Right? Dee? Can do. <laughs> okay so right here this sounds delicious to me because i love curry everything <laughs> mm. i pretty you much like could sprinkle curry powder on the world so <laughs> <laughs> you will like this and actually i'm i'm surprised even at my own taste buds the more i use curry the, the more i really enjoy it too and the neat thing about um, curry is is that it doesn't really need a whole lot of other spices married to it to be good so um, it's really quite a powerful spice in this salad and you know I've made oodles and goodles of faux cauliflower salads uh, potato salads the traditional way and they're okay um, if you know me ca cauliflower is cauliflower is cauliflower um, I try really hard <laughs> to branch out um, from it because it seems like people get really stuck um, on it. However, um, this curry cauliflower faux potato salad um, is it's really delicious and it just has really, really simple ingredients. You can garnish with, you know, you can garnish with that egg if you want to, or you can leave it plain. Um, again, green onion really got put to good use this week in my recipes. Um, as I was just looking for that little bit of um, onion flavor, you know, in the frittata, in the um, 
faux potato salad. I love radish and onion in my faux potato salads. Um, and this one just has some red pepper. Um, so really, really simple. It doesn't have a whole host of veggies in it and really simple seasoning. And, you know, I have to, now I kind of, I kind of hacked on the, the cauliflower, but now I'll give it, I'll give it its kudos is that when you just blanch, so I just blanch the cauliflower for five minutes. That's it. Um, pour in a colander and uh, just let it come to room temperature and uh, you kind of let the water drain off. You want it to be dry so it's not mushy and runny when you're using it. Um, it holds up extremely well long term. Um, another tip I wanted to give you on this is that the subject again of things like Walden Farms always comes up. You don't need to use Walden Farms in your potato salad. You could just simply use your daily oil allowance and you know a touch of water um, to get your your dressing down pat. And so this one, I actually didn't have any um, amazing meal left in my fridge, but I had a little bit of ranch um, dressing. And so I just used that in its place and uh, it, it's the bomb. <laughs> so, yeah, so there was, yeah. I've done I've done that before. The, the only way I like the Walden Farms Ranch is if it's mixed with a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, one of the things that I was thinking would be a really great show is a show all about making mayo and dressings mm -hmm. and aioli and tartar sauces and things that we are so used to. Um, and things that are pretty simple, simple stuff. And, and you could even dip your shrimps in them. <laughs> that is homemade um, shrimp cocktail sauce. Um, so I do, I want to, for all of those of you that are using Worcestershire sauce, it's not phase one legit. And if you have found a true zero, zero, zero um, Worcestershire sauce, um, please let me know, post your brand. I've never been able to find one, but I have a recipe where you can mimic the ingredients of Worcestershire. Um, so this is a little bit of sugar-free ketchup. It is sugar-free horseradish. It is Bragg soy aminos and a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of hot sauce. And you, you make a great um, seafood or shrimp cocktail. Well, seafood dip. Um, it's it's multi-purpose um, so that you can use this sauce in a multitude of um, of places. Awesome, Jennifer, dressing and sauce. So, yeah, I've got some, you know, what the, the really cool thing is, too, once you have the ingredients on hand to do things like homemade tartar sauce and and uh, um, shrimp cocktail sauce and, and other salad dressings, you just you'll be so comfortable doing it that you, you won't need to look at the recipe. You'll just be like, yeah, boom, I know I can have this, this, this and and away you go. Um, things like Dijon mustards and, you know, there's so many varieties of those types of things that you, know, you can keep in your pantry and in your fridge that make food creating really, really simple. And um, something like like that pictured here, a shrimp cocktail, you can make it as elaborate or as simple as you want. So you could build a beautiful salad or add some crunchy jicama sticks. You can use great big beautiful prawns and do a little bit of salted lemon water to bring them to a, um, do a, a fast boil on them or you can you know if you're super pressed for time I mean you can buy cooked shrimp ready to go and <laughs> and and have a really yeah um fast easy meal so I'm not ever going to pick on anybody who chooses a faster way um as long as it's a whole food so <laughs> yeah right right so, well yeah. I uh I'm not going to be down in Palm Desert to spend time with my mom and her best friend Stella unfortunately I was supposed to get down there but we We've got some other things going on, but we go to this big brunch um, at, at this uh, golf club and they do, you know what, you're totally able to eat phase one and I, and, and, and shrimps are, are on there now, of course, you know, you're not eating the um, cocktail sauce there, but you know, they have uh, a turkey, they've got um, ham, that fresh oh, ham. Yeah and uh crab legs and and shrimp and um it's amazing so you know don't sit home and cry it's just mom's day it's just one day you guys <laughs> carving, carving stations are amazing 
Um, maybe once I have all my boys home, maybe we'll do a carving station show too, because then they'll eat it all during the week. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like they eat it before you get it done, practically. <laughs> you know that that's a true, actual problem in my world. Yeah, it really that. is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Oh, you know, this was one of my very, very, so guys, this is a, this is an old revival. This is one of the very first things that I made with our mac and cheese um, from Ideal Protein. And I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not a traditional KD fan. I was not a fan before I knew there was 40 teaspoons of sugar in a box of KD. So I'm just going to say that one more time to all you mamas who are serving that up to your kiddos. 40 teaspoons of sugar in one box of KD. Okay, there's my lecture. Okay, what's, what's KD? We have Kraft mac and cheese. Kraft dinner. Kraft dinner. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, okay. Yeah. My Kraft dinner, the box it's of Kraft little, dinner. Yeah. A little disconnect between uh, sure. Canada and the U.S. Yeah. I'm like, what's KD? Okay, Kraft dinner, sure. yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's interesting, G. I was having a conversation about this with a, a new client today. And I was saying, I know that, you know, one of her go-to snacks was mac and cheese. And we were discussing why, you know, that's not going to happen in the future. Um, and, you know, I said, I know what you looked at. You looked at the 140 calories and didn't think it was a big deal. That's where we get caught, isn't it? Yeah, well, and then looking at actually how many serving sizes are, are in that box, right? <laughs> well, that, that, tri that trips up a lot of... That trips up a lot of people and fair enough, you know, it's really important, you know, as whether you're a coach or a clinic owner or a client, you really have to start, you know, learning the language, doing the homework, getting really comfortable with that, getting getting clients really comfortable with learning how, you know, to read and, and use food labels and, and serving size. Um, and it's a great thing to practice right at phase one so that when they finish in phase, when they get to phase four, the panic isn't on because they're not too sure what a serving is of something. So it's, it's really good language um, to talk about. So I, I do know that if, uh, like in a recipe like this, if you were a KD lover, we've had a lot of feedback that they don't really like the mac and cheese because it is um, more of a sharp um, cheese on there. And that is great. But let me tell you, it makes a fantastic um, pickle salad. So this is a cheesy pickle pasta salad. Really super simple ingredients. Celery, pickles, fresh dill salt and pepper pickle juice. I also use all the fabulous seasonings and garlic from the pickle jar. I chop that up and throw a little bit of that in there as well. Uh, you can use a touch of amazing mayo or other creamy dressings if you like, um, just as a, a little bit of a emulsion base, but you don't have to because you're using your um, cheese powder um, to make your sauce. So you're going to mix your cheese with pickle juice and a little bit of seasoning and it makes a fantastic sauce. So that is great as a, um, a, a dish on its own. Um, at lunchtime with a few extra veggies or well it's good anytime um, and yeah it's just it's um it's one that I, I don't it's one that I make for myself quite often because um, I like I really love dill pickles uh, garlic dills and pickle juice um, has electrolytes in it it can help curb hunger um, not hunger, cravings. It can help curb, curb cravings and the, the salt and the electrolytes and that really help do that too. So I, I'm just a big, I'm a pickle fan. So if you, I if you have, that. yeah. So if you have mac and cheese kicking around and you're not too sure what to do with it because you didn't like it on your own, these are great um, types of recipes to try. And, you know, we have some great cheesy ratatouilles and, and faux scalp potatoes and, you can put those noodles in chicken broth and you can put your cheese sauce in your celery and have some cheesy celery boats. There's lots of things you can do with it. So if you haven't Absolutely. given it back, 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, uh, you know, if you are not a member yet of the D's Recipes Facebook group, get over there and click the D's Recipes button. One of the things that we're doing, um, and and this is like, we actually need a librarian to help us. So if you are interested, if, if you love to do Facebook, Instagram, you um, are interested in um, helping us at we need a volunteer uh, intern to help us with some of this stuff. Dee and I only have so much time, but we uh, really need some help with um, with uh, organizing some of these recipes. And so our Dee's Facebook group, we have some units that go to the unit tab and we're just starting to kind of organize things. So, so be patient. Um, but uh, we will be organizing tabs under uh, not only the um, type of vegetable or the type of um, uh, IP product so that, you know, say that you have this was a, what sparked my my thought process the other day is, is one of my clients actually posted on these recipes. I've got a ton of tomato soup. What can I do with it? And so being able to go. I have a ton of tomato soup. What do I do with it? And then you click on the tomato soup tab and, and you'll see the recipes in there. So that's a, a work in, in progress. And uh, mm -hmm. if somebody wants to help us with that, please reach out to me. I would love, love, love you. All <laughs> right. So Deb says, um, D, I purchased a mini duo. So that's the Instant Pot. How about a cooking show with Instant Pots? Yeah, D. <laughs> I've been after D for a while to get an instant pot. She um, hasn't quite got there yet. <laughs> okay, so everybody knows. Everybody knows. I save the best for last, and uh, we uh, are, are are running through our thirty minutes, obviously again. Um, but um, this looks amazing to me. So Dee, talk to us about this fabulous Mother's Day brunch dessert. So I am a big, first, first of all, did anybody's mama ever make poke cake? Maybe as a kid, maybe you had jello poke cake. Maybe no. you had a, nope, nope. Okay. So, so, oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that the cake where you poke the holes in and you pour the jello over it? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Yes, we did make yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. My, my mom made that. She would make a marble cake and do the do the cherry or strawberry jello or whatever it was in it. And I, as a kid, um, I didn't. I, I don't cake. I don't like cake. I, I I like the icing on the cake. I I'll be really honest with you. I'm one of those people in the room when everybody else is like, oh, the icing is so disgusting. It's so sweet. There's me, mom. You know, like I just. But cake, um, you know what? I knew we were kindred spirits already. But yes, it just I, I just eat the icing. You know, my my favorite favorite all time cake used to be the double chocolate cake at Costco, and then I would just slice that thick icing off of it. And we should not be talking about that right now. But go ahead. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a realist. Um, you know, I. But the real and I and I and I didn't care for Jello. And one of the reasons why is because when I was a kid, for whatever reason, um, you know, I think it's probably because I ate a lot of dirt. But I would get a lot of tummy bugs, and when I caught a tummy bug, um, I could be sick for days. And so, of course, my mama did the. As we're talking about mamas, my mama did the traditional, you know, your soup crackers and your ginger ale and red jello and looking back you know you think about what we know now about <laughs> food dyes and things like that so anyway we eat that jello and you know what would happen to that jello so i've always had a problem with with jello because you know jello up the other way is not fantastic and so however then my mom would make this marble cake and then pour the jello over top of it and it would set in that cake. Then I liked that cake and my whole family liked that cake. We, you know, the six of us would eat that entire pan in a, in a flash. And so when I was doing recipe creating with IP years and years ago, I did that same kind of marble jello poke cake. And then I did a banana poke cake back when we had banana pudding and lemon poke cake back when we had lemon pudding, you know, and so on and so forth. 
Um, but of course, I'm a huge fan of rhubarb. Renee is a huge fan of rhubarb. You, you guys all know that because I, we tend to use it. And rhubarb puree has become one of my staples in my freezer. So I puree it um, with a little bit of sweetener and I freeze it and I have it on hand. And rhubarb puree as the icing um, or the topping on my poke cake is um, it's amazing. So you can put a little rhubarb puree right in your batter to make your cake nice and moist. And then you can add a, t a touch of sweetener to the rhubarb on top and, and it spreads beautifully and it settles um, once you poke your cake, it settles nicely into the cake and then sets up. And so um, my, um, the, the decoration on top are edible flowers. And I have to give a shout out to uh, my sister would grow these on her farm in her garden all the time. And uh, they're, yeah, they're part of the, the corn, the straw flowers are part of the edible flower family. And so really it's just for decoration. They're really dry. You could eat them if you wanted to, but it's just really, yeah, <laughs> it's just food safe. Um, decoration um, but look really really pretty on a plate and uh, the base of this week's poke cake is actually a chocolate drink mix and an oatmeal so lots of flavor lots of texture and rhubarb is good on anything IP pack wise so um, it, they just they're they're a good pairing so well, yeah. I have rhubarb in my Instant Pot and when we get off of this broadcast I'm gonna make myself my favorite thing is Dar uh, I love hot chocolate, so I make my hot chocolate drink with the warm rhubarb in it. Uh, amazing. That'll be my dinner tonight. Okay, so Dee, um, first of all, happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day to you. It, it will be, um, you know, I guess, I guess it's going to be interesting for you, but it's going to be um, pretty traditional for me. But um, for all of you moms out there, we just want to say thank you for watching. Um, if you uh, are struggling, wondering what you're going to have because you're usually drinking mimosas and, you know, eating over the top stuff and, you know, having your family's favorite dishes or going to your favorite restaurant. Remember that there's always choices. You can still go to your favorite restaurant. You're just going to look ahead and you're going to select off of the menu things that are appropriate for you at this point in your journey. And, and this isn't about stopping and starting. It's not about, you know, oh gosh, I'm just going to go for it this weekend, then I'll start again on Monday. Because we're not stopping and starting our lives. We're just traveling down the same road and, and making decisions that suit us for the moment. And, and if you find that you want to make a conscious decision to mindfully have a, a bite of something, that's your choice and, and, and not feeling guilty about that and, and just making that part of your journey, part of your path. And, and, and that's something that's been coming up a lot as I've uh, been working with clients this week. So I just really wanted to share with you that we're all on a life journey and it's about learning it's about changing it's about lifestyle it's about creating that healthy balance and we can all do it we don't have to be all in all out we can just be going down the path of life and making conscious choices and and if you are consciously choosing to make some really good health choices enjoy that and know that whatever you might usually have will be their next Mother's Day. So I encourage you to enjoy the experience. And on that note, Dee, give us your words of advice. <laughs> well, I, uh, you know, I had read um, the Beck Diet Solution. And I know sometimes we talk about um, reading material and I have gone back and I am redoing um, some of the the theories in that book and and part of that is um, why you know it's okay um, to be a little bit hungry it's okay to plan so say you're out somewhere and 
And, you know, we're going to, we talk about all the time about being, being prepared. Um, you know, it's, it's actually quite easy to find a place where your whole entire family, no matter how big or small, can go have a meal. You can call ahead. Uh, most menus are on websites. Um, just like today's show, brunches are amazing. There is whole protein carving stations and plain salads and fancy salads. And one thing that we're going to, we're, I'm going to start referring to a lot. It's going to sound like a little bit of a broken record, but your phase one protocol sheet, if you know, if you actually look at all the foods in your grocery store, that phase one sheet has most of them on there. There's really not too many things that you're actually missing out on um, while you're doing this. And so I'm always going to guide you back to enjoy those really whole, wholesome foods. And, and, you know, if you had an extra slice of turkey or an extra slice of steak, maybe on Mother's Day, I would say that that's a fantastic choice um, versus, yeah, versus, you know, um, overindulging on something that might make you feel really terrible later or um, cause some inflammation and then have buyer's remorse later. But um, yeah, I, I, it's, again, it, it's up to you, you know, up, up to you and your choices, but celebrate the day and you know um to everybody who you know whether you're a mom or you're not a mom if you have a mom if you have a grandmother if you just have a lady in your life who is just a fabulous influence uh you know make it a day about celebrating that and, and not so much about the food um maybe you just have a normal um, eating day and just go do a different activity other than food if it's a trigger point for you. Of course, we love talking about food and giving you ideas, but if those kind of situations are really tough and stress stressful for you, um, you know, don't engage because <laughs> we we do talk about that a lot of times too, you know, but um, make a plan and, and get everybody on board. And, you know, if there's something there that you can't have, like that you can't have, you don't say I can't have it. You say, I don't eat that right now. And we keep yeah, seeing that. Just, yeah. Or I'm just choosing that. That's not my, my choice. My current choice. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, and you know what? People don't have to know that you're on a diet. You can use language like, you know what? I'm just choosing to try to eat a little bit healthier right now. And what that means to me is, you know, I'm, I'm going to drink less alcohol or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to cut down on my sugar. You don't, you don't ever have to announce to anybody that you're, you're on a diet and just choose your language different. So, um, you know, we're going to keep talking about those kind of things too. And yeah. Yeah. Hey. I hope it's a wonderful, blessed day for everybody. And uh, half of my family is not going to be home for Mother's Day. So it's going to be really here. And I actually have one kid that's actually really super, super sick. So, yeah. <laughs> our, yeah. Yeah, so our weekend plans. We were supposed to be heading to a volleyball nationals in Edmonton and she is too sick to go. So I have a very oh. devastated child here. So it happens. It happens. Life happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want to say thank you. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And um, hi mom. I happy happy Mother's Day to you. <laughs> and um, go sharks tonight. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Sorry, D. I had to do that. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. All my Canadian teams. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's all good. I'm all right, you guys. See you soon. See you next week for something fun.